It's well known that structural racism, social injustice, and stress are key factors that account for why African Americans, but particularly black men, have higher rates of life-threatening diseases, leading to shorter lifespans than all other Americans. And that reality impacts the mental health of black men as well. According to the online counseling site therapyforblackmen.org, African Americans are 20% more likely to have serious psychological distress than whites are. Among men aged 18 to 44 who had daily feelings of anxiety or depression, non-Hispanic black and Hispanic men were less likely than white men to have used mental health treatments. Suicide is the third leading cause of death for African-American males ages 15 to 24, and African-American teenagers are more likely to attempt suicide than are white teenagers. Joining me now is Gary Bailey. He's the assistant director, I'm sorry, assistant dean for community engagement and social justice at the College of Social Sciences at Simmons University. Welcome to City Line. Thank you so much, Karen. Gary, those uh, numbers very concerning. Please elaborate a little bit more on the factors that lead to those statistics. Well, we look at the world in which we're living in. Uh, we are in the midst of a pandemic, an economic meltdown. Um, a societal stress like many people have not seen in a very long time. And I would argue that we're looking at um, uh, the eruption attacks on democracy, mm -hmm. which um, African Americans have believed in since its inception. We've believed in the promise of this nation. And uh, January 6th, I think, was a, not a surprise for many of us, but it was a, a, an area of concern about what might be possible. Mm -hmm. And then the reemergence of white supremacy that says you're not safe anywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, so all of that stress and the, um, the historic um, belief in our communities that you don't tell your business to people. Mm -hmm. Uh, as my late father used to say, why are you going to tell your problems? Who cares anyway? You know, you talk about history, that word history. Um, health professionals are saying and now that trauma actually goes across, across generations, generations and can be inherited. Yeah, the work of Resma Menachem, uh, Rachel Yehuda, uh, psychiatrist Rachel Yehuda, um, who's looked at uh, survivors of the Holocaust, which is what got me interested in the whole concept of epigenetics, mm -hmm. and really looking at trauma as a gene marker that, and, and to really think about our genetic, D, uh, our DNA gets passed across generations. So think about the cumulative nature of the impact of slavery. She, uh, Dr. Yehuda looked at the impact of the Holocaust on survivors. Mm -hmm. So then think about the markers of 400 years of unrelenting trauma in this country, and then look at the people who were bred literally bred, so trauma passing to trauma. Mm -hmm. Menachem says, uh, who's out of Minneapolis, that trauma ultimately becomes interpreted as culture. So what people see as the black man, um, uh, the kind of withdrawn, uh, contained, um, not emotive, uh, people can look sometimes and say that we're very angry. Mm -hmm. um, I would argue is what trauma looks like in action. Um, it's that way in which we operate in a world that is self-protective. You know, we talked about the um, social injustice and the racial unrest that's happened uh, over the past year and a half, two years, the murder of George Floyd, the murder of uh, Ahmaud Arbery. Mm -hmm. uh, I would imagine that, that, that those incidents and others like it have really uh, been a spark. Uh, that has unleashed something in African American. Well, it's men. absolutely no question. What it does is reinforce, it validates for those of us who have been living in this skin for a very long time that this is the reality of our life, that the safety is a something that you're constantly negotiating. Mm -hmm. So uh, you look at uh, Botham Jean. He was not safe sitting in his own house eating ice cream on his own couch. So you're not safe at home. You're not safe taking a jog. You're not safe being curious about a, a site mm -hmm. and, and peeking in without it having some sort of uh, uh, dangerous uh, interpretation by some. Uh, and so that sense of not being safe, without safety, who are we? Without a sense of safety, um, how do we operate in the world? But yet and still black men have to operate in we the world. We have no choice about so it. So what are the solutions? What can be done? I think that the what's so important is the ability to not lose track of finding joy. 
um, and being centered in something that's bigger than yourselves. Franz Fanon, uh, the black psychoanalyst, Caribbean psychoanalyst, that once said that none of us sit under, eat the fruit of the trees which we've planted. Mm -hmm. um, in uh, Thoughts of a Colored Man, they talk about, we don't, the playwrights talk about, we don't stand on the ground that others have built, mm -hmm. we stand on their shoulders. Mm -hmm. And so that sense of connectivity and history, I think it's also important uh, to be able to find community, that we have to take down our own walls about the way in which we've been introduced to toxic masculinity. Men and black men, in particular, aren't known for reaching out, though, to ask for assistance in this area. We, we do and we don't. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think that the ways in which we've been acculturated, and I say we, because there's exceptions to everything that I'm saying mm -hmm. here, um, but that we've been acculturated to uh, not talk about feelings because talking about feelings were, could be deadly. Mm -hmm. To really access feelings, to access the feelings of what it means to be angry or to be sad or to be vulnerable um, could in effect cost you your life uh, across our continuous time in this country. Mm -hmm. And so we have to be able to give people permission to talk about anxiety, to talk about stress, to talk about fear. Um, that's why I thought so. Colored Man is such an amazing play. How do you do that? Where do you do that? Well, do you I, do think, it with? I think you do that as in, in schools. We begin to teach people, and particularly young black men, young black boys, how to, be, how to have the language, the emotional language, mm -hmm. um, to be able to name what they're feeling and to be able to not have to act it out, but to be able to talk it out. Um, in my clinical work, I've just seen people who don't have emotional vocabulary. Mm -hmm. They don't have the words they have the action, so giving people the language that they need. Helping people to be able to check in mindfulness um, as a way of being able to center yourself is another tool. Uh, and also, and I would, I would push back slightly, it, you know, what I find is black men do have networks. Mm -hmm. We just use them very differently. We don't use them in the same ways mm -hmm. that women do. Mm -hmm. So uh, the barbershop is the still, barbershop is a key. still good is therapy key. place. It's key. Yes. It's key. Uh -huh. And I don't want to see barbershops becoming the places where you need an appointment. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you need Other to, than to have your hair yeah, cut. Right, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> you need to be able to drop in, sometimes just to sit and hang mm -hmm. so that you get to hear other people talking. And just be around, and be around people folk. like you that you know are be experiencing folk. life the same way you exactly. are. Exactly. All be right, Gary folk. Bailey, thank you for being here. Always talking. Happy to be with you. So if you need a therapist, you can try the website therapyforblackmen.org or for other resources or ways to find a free therapist, check out actress Taraji P. Henson's Boris L. Henson Foundation. But if you need immediate assistance, reach out to Call to Talk. Their local number is 508-532-2255, or you can text C2T to 741741. Up next, one man's decades-old challenge to the Museum of Fine Arts and other museums to end institutional racism in the arts.